You're listening to Simon Scriver's Amazingly Ultimate Fundraising Superstar Podcast, talking all things fundraising, charities, nonprofits, and more. Here's your host, as always, Simon Scriver. I am on my way to the Institute of Fundraising, Fundraising Convention. Uh, is that even what it's called? Um, and as I arrive in UK, I listen to the soothing sounds of England. Fuck you, mate. Get out the fucking road. Ah, uh, it's good to be back. Um, but for some of us, some of us, we can't actually uh, afford to go to conventions like these. Or even if we're able to attend them, unfortunately, to, to attend these kind of great conferences, um, there's still room for more personal development. And we have to wonder, working for organizations with shoestring budgets or sometimes no budget, how do we get the most out of our personal development? How do we learn more about fundraising? How do we become better fundraisers without blowing too much cash? And that's what today's uh, quick tip is about. And in 10 minutes, I want to share some ideas, some ways that I've developed my skills uh, and, and my peers have also developed their skills. Um, so first of all, obviously the internet is a great tool for getting information um, and there's some really good resources and places to follow other fundraisers and see what they put out, see what they share and see what they learn. Facebook is obviously a plague on our nation, but it can be useful. Um, and especially the group like Fundraising Chat where you have thousands of different fundraisers who are always happy to give feedback, always sharing interesting stuff. Uh, if you are still on Facebook, then I highly recommend joining Fundraising Chat. You can also find a lot of other Facebook groups, some of them really niche if you're particularly focused on grants, if you're particularly focused on individual giving, if you're a solo consultant, these are the kind of groups that exist for you. Twitter, I obviously love. I'm on a toast fundraiser. Uh, and there's a bunch of great people that I follow who I constantly learn from on Twitter. Um, so you don't have to be out there posting stuff, but just lurking and looking at some of the best. But Twitter's best when you do share. Likewise on LinkedIn, there's some LinkedIn groups out there, not a whole lot of great ones. Uh, but again, you can follow great people. You can connect with great people. And you can ask great people specific questions. And I have found fundraisers are always very, very helpful. There's lots of uh, great email mailing lists. A lot of my guests who come on this podcast do regular blogs, regular mails, um, and they're great people to follow and great people to subscribe to. If you're into reading mailings, if you're into reading blogs, that can be really helpful. Podcasts obviously are great, although generally podcasts focus on interviews. Um, even my own, you know, half the episodes are all interviews. And there's stuff we can gain from that, um, but, uh, you know, not so much practical learning. Um, obviously, these 10 minute quick tips are aimed at being very practical. There's lots of fundraising books out there, um, and I'm going to share a link. Um, I'm going to share a link to my recommended reading, which is books, blogs, mailing lists, uh, and things like that, where we can actually um, find really, really good information. So if you're a book reader or an audio book reader, or you read in your Kindle, there are good fundraising books out there, and I'll share some links. In terms of prof uh, professional development, where we actually pay to learn some stuff, there are some uh, options out there. I've done the certificate in fundraising and the diploma in fundraising. And they're great, they're pricey uh, or pricey-ish. If you can get your organization to pay for them, then they're absolutely worthwhile. They look good on your CV or resume um, and you do learn some good stuff in there and you meet other great fundraisers. Uh, you have things like the CFRE and the CFRE is again, is something that I used to have and we wanna be a little bit cautious about that because there's not a whole lot of learning in there. Um, it's self-learning, you're sent off to read recommended reading and, and essentially you study to pass the exam. Essentially, all you're paying for there, and it is very pricey, um, is you're paying uh, to take an exam. Um, but that CFRE qualification, the certificate qualification, the diploma qualification, and more, they can be useful. But really think about what you're gaining from them, because sometimes um, it's it's just a qualification. Uh, it's a qualification that donors aren't looking for. It's a qualification that most nonprofits aren't looking for. Usually, they're looking for a track record instead. Um, and so be really risk realistic about what you want to get from them. I get a lot from those because I'm a consultant and it, it instills confidence in clients. Um, but if you're a fundraiser who's donor facing, it doesn't necessarily um, give you much of a boost. Again, there's lots of courses out there, lots of conferences, um, and you can look at those. There are free ones. Um, I myself have even uh, run pay what you feel like paying courses. Um, with free courses, you just want to be a little bit cautious about who's running it. 
um, and who's delivering it, because sometimes these can turn into real salesy sessions. The reason they're free is because they're trying to get you into rooms so that they can sell to you. Um, so I've seen ones uh, run by very different vendors, uh, and they turn into just a sales pitch, just about their specific product. So be really cautious about who is running them. Um, but there are great free courses out there run by excellent uh, fundraisers who, who deliver great stuff, and I've learned a lot from these things. If you can start to pay for training, then you start to get quality stuff. But again, look for the right people and look for the right um, uh, courses and the right training. Talk to other people who've attended them and see how beneficial they've, they've um, found it and get them to be really honest. Conferences are great. Like I said, you have a big mix of different subjects. Um, and one of the great values of uh, conferences is that you get to meet other fundraisers. We always say like um, some of the best learnings are what happens in between the sessions. So there's a whole um, thing there about going to conferences. There's a huge benefit. That's, that's you know, I love conferences. I'm addicted to fundraising conferences. Um, if you can't afford to go and, you know, things like uh, the, the fundraising convention, uh, they can be up to like a thousand pounds to attend. If you can't afford to go to them, um, there are the other ways to do it. Uh, look at bursaries. Very often the conferences offer birth bursaries or their sponsors offer bursaries, which essentially is just sponsoring you to go, paying for you to go. Um, and sometimes you'll be surprised if you apply to these, uh, how easy it can be to get them. You don't get them if you don't apply, so try applying them. Um, try talking to companies involved. Try talking to the conference itself close to the time. If they're still trying to fill slots, um, they might be very uh, open to the idea of just allowing you to go or allowing you to go very cheap because they want bums on seats um, and they want to get in as many people as they can. They'll try and sell you the ticket, but um, when it comes to last minute, you might still get in. Another great way to attend these conferences is to volunteer. Uh, it's obviously a bit of work. They tell you what to do. They tell you what sessions to go to, but you do get to attend sessions. Um, and so, you know, sometimes this is the easiest way uh, for us to go because they're always desperate for volunteers. Um, so think about going. When you're actually at a conference, um, if you're fortunate enough to go to these great conferences, um, be choosy about what sessions you go to. You know, look for recommendations, look for people who've already seen these speakers. Uh, and who tell you that's good and be honest with yourself we all fall into the trap of going to the sessions uh, that we already know about to confirm what we think we know we go to the sessions that our friends are in um, but let's go to the sessions where we actually need development yeah go to the sessions that are out of our comfort zone stuff that we're actually trying to learn other ways we can develop ourselves think about getting a mentor or a coach obviously this is something i do professionally if you want to hire me you can hire me that'd be fantastic um, but getting people who've already gone through this, who've already done these things, uh, who have a pool of knowledge and pool of resources to help you through your experiences. Um, look at uh, uh, people who are professional mentors or coaches in fundraising and, and price them up. See if you, know, you can get that budget from your uh, organization or you want to invest in yourself. Otherwise, look at free mentors and coaches. And what I mean by that is identify fundraisers you look up to, fundraisers who you think are successful, and just simply approach them and ask them if they'd be open to mentoring. Mentoring is a two-way relationship. Uh, mentors get a lot out of it, um, and you'll be surprised how many people will just be flattered that you've asked them uh, and actually go ahead and help you through that. So you can have quite a formal mentoring um, relationship with a good fundraiser, um, and it doesn't cost you anything. That is possible. It's just about having a conversation and using your fundraising skills to actually ask them. On a side note, you should be mentoring. Um, you know, no matter what stage of your career you're at, there's always someone who is um, less, um, is not at that point yet. And so you should consider who else you can mentor. Um, and, and, you know, again, we get something very beneficial from mentoring, uh, um, mentoring someone else. Um, and it's just good to give back to that. There's other men mentoring organizations. You would have heard um, Susan Morgan from the Tony Elisha Foundation on this podcast before and they run free mentoring for people. So, so look for organizations like that who also provide it. Less formal kind of mentoring is you can just simply meet fundraisers for coffee and pick their brains and ask them questions on specific things um, and, and just learn from them. And actually that's where you know me and most of my fundraising friends learn a lot of our stuff. It's just from identifying fundraisers and skilled people that we look up to and saying, can I buy you a coffee or a hot chocolate? And having them for an hour to chat through. You know, again, there's no point in us making the same mistakes that someone made a few years ago already. So talk to people who've gone into situations like that um, and just pick the brains. Fundraisers are so unbelievably generous. I know when people ask me questions, um, I'm always happy to answer. 
you know, after a while, we have to start to talk about um, how I make my money and try and kind of um, uh, professionalize it. Um, but in the early stages, certainly, if I can just answer a quick question, I, I will. And I know fundraisers have always been really generous for me, with me in terms of sharing uh, their knowledge. I'd also recommend joining a board. I've said this a few times in the podcast. Join the board of a small nonprofit. Um, you are qualified to do that. You are experienced enough to do that. Don't doubt yourself. You have more fundraising experience than probably anyone else on that board. Be really uh, strict about how much you put time you put into it and how much of fundraising itself you put into it. But it's a great way to learn other areas that maybe you're not touching on in your own uh, fundraising program. If you're, you know, quite niche or in a specific area, um, this opens you up to different areas of fundraising and even a different cause, different structure, all of that. So I really, really recommend joining a board. It's a fantastic thing to do and it looks great on your CV and resume. The final thing I would say is do it. Yeah, that, you know, we can, we can keep learning, we can keep reading, we can keep going to conferences um, until we drop dead. Um, but, you know, there's only so much you can learn before you actually go out and do it. Sometimes all this education is just a way of delaying the inevitable, delaying our fundraising. And so I would say really go out and do it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Sometimes that's where we uh, learn our biggest lessons from. Uh, asking and fundraising, it's like a muscle. Um, you know, you want to work it out. You want to go out and make those mistakes. You want to go out and be a bit raw. Um, and then you'll fine tune it and you'll be better over time. So don't feel like you have to read one more book, listen to one more podcast, go to one more conference. Just start doing it in conjunction with all these areas of personal development. That's it. That's a quick tip for this week. Uh, I'll hopefully see you at the fundraising convention. If you're there, I'm speaking twice. So do come and see me or um, let's just grab a cup of tea in between. Um, otherwise, I'll see you at another conference coming up soon. Take care. You've been listening to Simon Scriver's Amazingly Ultimate Fundraising Superstar Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and head over to changefundraising.com to learn more or get in touch with Simon. Or don't. Whatever. You're big enough to make your decisions. Hello, this is Morgan Freeman. For discounts on Simon's best-selling online fundraising courses, go to www.changefundraising.com forward slash training and use coupon code podcast. Complete them in your own time, wherever you want. Get busy living or get busy buying.